What is going on guys, it's Pungeon here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Warframe. Now I know I'm a little bit late to this, but this is going to ensure that you have the best optimization inside of Warframe to ensure that you have the highest frame rates, the lowest frame times, and the least amount of lag possible. And I can guarantee that you're going to be seeing some decent results no matter what sort of system you're running on, whether that be low end or high end. Having the extra frame boost is always nice. So guys, if this video does help you, please do press that like button down below, and also feel free to comment at any point during the video for just general feedback or any questions or queries you might have during the FPS guide or any help you might need, please do let me know down in that comment section below as I pretty much read every single comment that gets posted down there and I will do my best to respond to you. Please do share this video around with any friends or teammates or anything like that who you think might benefit from this FPS guide and are complaining about low frame rates or running on a low end system and they just need a helping hand to fix any lag issues. Please do link them this video as that will be deeply appreciated. So starting off what you guys need to do first of all is go down into the description below and find the FPS pack provided by me. Once you guys have got the FPS pack go ahead download it and put it onto your desktop. You'll notice that it's in a zip file what you guys need to go ahead and do is right click on the zip file using WinRAR or 7 zip. If you don't have either of those programs, then just go ahead, Google around to download and install them and hit extract here. Once you guys have extracted the FPS pack, you'll be given a folder just like this and you'll find ccleaner and timeresolution.exe inside. Now we're not going to be using these just yet as we're going to be going into our game files first. So starting off, what we're going to be doing is going into Steam. I'm going to be starting off by right clicking on Warframe, going to properties, going to general, going into local files found at the top, going to browse local files and then warframe.exe we're going to be right clicking on, going to properties, Go into compatibility. Now, if you guys do not have these options, which I'm about to show you now, do not worry as some versions of Windows don't support it. It also depends on your hardware as well. So if you do not see these two options here, that's absolutely fine. You can just skip out this part. But for you guys that do, go down and find the override high DPI scaling behavior, scaling performed by, this might also be worded a little bit differently depending on which version of Windows you're running on, but if it says something about override or disable high DPI scaling, turn that off by checking that and setting it to application. Also disable the full screen optimizations, hit apply and OK. We're also going to be doing that for warframe.x64.exe by going to properties, compatibility, disabling full screen optimizations and overriding high DPI scaling behavior and pressing apply and OK. We can then exit out of there and exit out of the properties. And then gonna be booting into Warframe. Now, once you guys are inside of the launcher, what I want you to go ahead and do is go into the top right and press the settings icon. Inside of here, what we're going to be doing is ensuring that all of the left-hand side settings are enabled. Now, for you guys running on low end and older systems, you might find it best off here to disable DirectX 11 and also disabling 64-bit mode. So you should experiment with this. After the FPS guide, if you're not happy with the results, come back into the launcher and disable those two settings, press okay and try that again. But for most of you, you can go ahead and enable all of these because they will help you. Once you're done with that, you can press OK, and we're then going to be booting into the game. Now once you guys are in game, go ahead, press escape and go into the options menu. Inside of here, we're going to be going over to display. And what we're going to be doing inside of here is when we're setting display mode to full screen, I'm keeping mine at borderless full screen just because I'm recording. Then what we're going to be doing is setting our resolution to whichever your resolution you currently run on. Then what we're going to be doing is keeping our resolution the exact same as to what it was before. You guys can go ahead and lower this resolution if you wish to do so, as you will see a frame increase from it, but it just depends. Keep going as low as you can and pressing the confirm until you eventually do not like how it looks and find a good health the balance in between those settings. Refresh rate, set that to whatever your default monitor refresh rate is. Aspect ratio, set that to auto. Vertical sync, we're going to be turning that off. Maximum frame rate is going to be set to no limit. Field of view, contrast and brightness, all personal preference, so you can set these to whichever you wish to do so. Then going down to graphics quality, we're going to be setting the quality to custom. We're going to be turning off pretty much everything inside of here by going through all of the sliders and setting them all to off. We're going to be setting geometry detail to low, particle system quality low, shadow quality low, texture memory low, and anthropic filtering, we're going to be turning that off. Trilinear filtering is going to be turned off and anti-aliasing is going to be disabled. Depth of field is going to be disabled alongside motion blur. Color correction we can keep on. Dynamic lighting off. Character shadows off. Constant weapon trail off. Weapon elemental effects can also be turned off as well. Once you guys have got all of those settings set, press confirm. It will say some changes will not take effect until you restart your game. That's absolutely fine as we're going to be closing out of the game. Go back into the options menu and then go over to the interface. Then what we're going to be doing is enabling show FPS. Then what you can also do inside of here is you can turn off some HUD options to ensure that you have the best frame rate possible like damage slash affinity numbers that can be turned off for a fps boost as well again if you don't want to hurt your gameplay experience you should keep some of this on but if you personally don't mind seeing the damage numbers this will increase your fps by a slight amount and the main option we're looking for down here is going down to hud motion and turning this off for a slight fps increase once we're done with that press confirm now another option you can go ahead and turn off if you wish to get the best fps possible again this will make your game look slightly different is going into the gameplay options and disabling the gore option inside of here we're going to be doing this for the best fps increase possible 
possible. But again, if you guys do wish to keep that, then you can go ahead and keep that. But if you want the best FPS possible, turn that off and press confirm. And then what we can do is we can simply quit out of the game. Next thing we're going to be doing once we've closed the game is going to be going into Steam, going into the top left and going into Steam settings. We're then going to be going over to the in-game section and we're going to be turning off everything to do with Steam inside of the game to ensure that we have the best FPS possible and Steam cannot cause any overlay issues. If you do use the Steam overlay whilst you're playing your game, I recommend not using it anymore. But if you must keep it, then you can re-enable that if you wish to do so. But if you guys are not bothered by it, turning this off will increase your FPS. So make sure that you uncheck everything inside of there and press OK. Moving on from there, we're going to be unparking our CPU by going into our power options. To do this, go into the bottom left and type in power. And select any of the options with the battery with the cord around it. Go to the top and go into power options, then going into the show additional plans button by pressing this on the right hand side, and select high performance. Once you've selected high performance, go to change plan settings, change advanced power settings, and inside of here we're going to be going into the hard disk option, turn off hard disk after, and set the setting inside of here to zero, then press apply, scroll all the way down to processor power management, go into minimum processor state, and maximum processor state and ensure that they are both set to 100%. Once you're done with that, press apply and OK. You can then exit out of the power options. Next, what we're going to be doing is optimizing Windows itself. Go into the bottom left, type this PC, right click on this PC, go to properties. In the left hand side here, we're going to be going to advanced system settings, going into the advanced tab found here at the top, and performance and then settings. Inside of here, we're going to be setting this to custom under visual effects. And we're going to be unchecking everything inside of here besides show thumbnails instead of icons and also smooth edges of screen fonts. If you guys want the best FPS possible, I recommend turning off smooth edges of screen fonts as your text will look rough like this. Some people like this, I personally prefer this and people have asked me how to do this in the past and that's how you do it. Again, this option here is completely up to you, but I personally like to turn it off. Make sure everything else in here is unchecked just by checking it. And once your settings match that, press the apply button. Go to the advanced tab and put processor scheduling, set that for programs press apply and data execution prevention we're going to be turning that on for essential windows programs and services only which is the option here at the top and not for all only for essential once you guys have done that press apply and okay press OK, and you can then exit out of the My PC settings. Next, we're going to be going into MS Config. Do this by going into the bottom left and typing in MS Config and pressing Enter. Go into the Boot section found here, select your operating system, and then go to the Advanced Options tab found here. Highlight the number of processors and scroll down all the way to the bottom until you see the maximum amount of processors you can select for your processor. For me, that is 12. You might have less, you might have more. It could be anywhere between 2, 4, 8, 12, and there might even be more. Make sure that you use your scroll to ensure that you have the highest number possible selected select that number and press OK, apply and OK. Once you're then done with that, go into system configuration and exit without restart. And then after doing that, we're going to be going down and deleting our Windows temporary files. To do this, we're going to be going into the bottom left and typing in percent, app data, percent and enter. Inside of here, we're going to be going up to the app data folder found at the top, going into local, scrolling all the way down until we see the TEMP folder found here. And inside of here, we're going to be highlighting everything from the top to the bottom, right clicking and delete. Press yes. It's going to tell you that the action cannot be completed for all folders and files inside of here. That's absolutely fine. You should do this for all current items. Hit skip. And if it says it again, make sure you hit skip again. And you'll be left with around about 10 or so files inside of here. Not everything is going to be able to be removed, but everything that has been removed, Windows isn't even using. Now, it's always fantastic to hear how many gigabytes have been removed from this folder. Sometimes it's a couple hundred meg. I've heard rumors of up to around about 60 plus gigabytes being removed from this folder, depending on how old your system install is. So please do let me know in the comments below. It's always fantastic to have a discussion about that because I can see some ridiculous numbers coming up sometimes. So once you guys have gone ahead and done that, just go ahead and clear your recycling bin and then you can then exit out of your temporary files. Next, what we're going to be doing is clearing up our startup items. This will help system boot times. It will also make sure that your system is running a lot cleaner and no unnecessary programs are booting with Windows. To do this, go into the bottom, right click, go to task manager, and on the right hand side, go to startup. And inside of here, you're going to be finding all of your startup items. If it says status enabled, this means that whenever you boot into Windows or whenever you sign into your Windows account, this program will automatically boot up, which is absolutely terrible sometimes because we don't want everything always booting up. Like, for instance, integrated camera preview. I do not want that booting up with my system, so I'm going to right-click and click disable. You can also just click and press disable down there. I also don't want Plex Media Server running by default, so I'm going to hit disable on that. And I'm personally going to keep hold of Java Update Scheduler and Windows Defender notifications. Everything else I'm turning off. This basically means that you can still open up the programs and still get full utilization inside of Windows of the programs. You can just go ahead and boot them from inside of your desktop or search for them or wherever it is you have them. But when you sign into your Windows account, Windows isn't defaulting opening and slowing down your PC by opening tons and tons of programs to ensure that they're ready and waiting for you. You might notice sometimes when you log into your PC, it takes ages and ages for Windows to respond and for you to be able to get onto a web browser and search or just open up Steam and play something. So this will definitely help out with that. Once you guys have 
are done inside of there, you can just simply X out. Next, what we're gonna be doing is going into the FPS pack provided, going inside of there and going through the CC setup. The latest version of CCleaner will be included inside of here. So it might not be version 535, but whatever version it is, just go ahead and install it. Once it's done, hit run cleaner. And inside of here, this is a fantastic utility program to ensure that your PC is running the best as possible. It's removing any temporary files, removing any excess crap from your PC that we can get rid of to ensure that you have the best performance possible. And it also has some really good functionality items inside of there as well to ensure that your PC is running to the best it can. Another quick thing to take note of whilst you're in here is your GPU it will be listed here at the top. For me, I have an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970. You might have a different NVIDIA GeForce card. You might also have an AMD or a Radeon card. On whichever GPU you're running, make sure that you take note of that because we're going to be coming back to that later. Now, once you're in the CCleaner utility, go ahead and go into the top left hand side, go to Cleaner and hit the Analyze button. It's going to go through your system, go through all of your hard drives to ensure that it can remove any temporary files, any excess files, any duplicate files, anything that your system does not need. You can also filter through on the left hand side here to unselect anything if you wish to do so. You can also go into applications, but leave it on default is pretty much safe to go ahead and do. Now, I ran one of these yesterday and it's already going to be removing 100 megabytes of excess temporary dump files and stuff like that, excess cookies, stuff that you do not need. I don't even use Internet Explorer, yet there are temporary internet files inside of there that it can remove. So for me, in around about 20 hours time, it's already removing 100 megabytes. So it's always fantastic to know in the comments down below how much it's going to analyze and it's going to remove for you. Once it's gone ahead and completed the analysis, just go down into the bottom right and hit the run cleaner and press OK. It might ask you to close a couple of programs, that's absolutely fine, just hit yes. And once you're done inside of there, it's going to tell you that the cleaning is complete, it's going to tell you the total amount of files and the total size removed. What I then also like to do is hit analyze again, just to ensure that everything is cleared out, and it should say zero bytes to be removed, analysis complete. If anything else is in there to be removed, just hit run cleaner and keep going through that until you're given this page. Now, once you guys are done inside of there, I do recommend coming back either on the first or the last day of every month, just to ensure that you guys can run this program and ensure that you have the best performance possible for the upcoming month. And just to stay on top of it, doing it around about 12 to 10 times a year, that'll be absolutely fantastic. Again, take note of your GPU here at the top, because we're going to be going into a step here where you need to know what your GPU is. So for me, I'm running an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970. Close out of the CCleaner program and go down into the description below and whether you're running a Radeon card or an NVIDIA card, go to the corresponding GPU update link, which I've provided down below. For you guys running NVIDIA GeForce cards, you'll be given a website like this. Go to the automatic driver updates tab and hit download there. Go ahead, download and install that utility. It's gonna go through everything with you. It's going to ensure that your GPU drivers are up to date. New GPU drivers often come out on about once to twice every month and these do not update manually. So make sure that you guys go ahead, download these utilities to ensure that you're constantly getting the newest GPU updates, especially for you guys running on newer games. This can also solve any FPS issues you might be having because it might be a faulty or an old driver. There are constantly new optimizations coming out and you should definitely update your drivers around about once a month. So if you haven't in the last month, make sure that you do this. For you AMD Radeon users, go to this website here, scroll down to the automatically detect and install your driver, hit download, install it, run through it, go through everything again and it will do everything necessary for you. One last program I've linked in the description down below is Advanced System Care 10 Free. Some people like this program, some people personally don't, but I always recommend this program to anyone, any ability or any knowledge of PCs. This program is absolutely fantastic to make sure you are getting the best performance out of your PC, no matter whether it's a low end, medium end or high end PC. It's going to go ahead and optimize your PC to make sure it is running to the best of its ability. So go ahead, hit that free download and install it. Once you guys have gone ahead and done that, you'll find it on your desktop. Just open up the program and go to the clean and optimize tab found here at the top. Inside of here, it's going to give you a bunch of different options. You can go ahead and check. I like to hit select all and then hit the scan option. Inside of here, it's going to take a while to do this. So make sure that you let it go ahead and do it thing it's definitely worth waiting while if your hard drives are a little bit on the slower side or if you haven't done a scan through this before again it can take a little while it might even look like it's frozen but give it a while make sure that you go ahead run through this scan as it's definitely worth doing and once advanced system care is done with this scan it's going to give you an overall rating for security performance and stability it's going to go ahead and tell you how many items can be fixed and how many items have been found that they can fix at the top there and what you guys need to go ahead and do is just hit the fix button and it's going to go ahead and apply all of those fixes for you and once it's done fixing it's going to tell you that fix is complete it's going to tell you how many items in each department it's gone ahead and fixed for you and the file size of those. And what you can go ahead and do then is just hit finish. Again, alongside CCleaner, I recommend using this on the first or the last day of every month to ensure that your system is running to the best of its ability. You can also go ahead and go into the toolbox, have a look around inside of here and play around with some things if you wish to do so. For any of you guys who are a bit more tech friendly, and what I want you guys to go ahead and do is go to the speed up tab found here, go to the deep optimization and make sure that you hit the optimize button to ensure that all the deep optimizations can also be applied as well. And you'll also note that there is a 
Turbo Boost mode. Now, this is what we're going to be coming back to in a minute. But for now, what we're going to be doing is going ahead, restarting our PCs. I want you guys to go ahead, restart your PC, come back to this video and follow along from here. We'll not need to restart the PC anymore. This is just to apply all of the changes and make sure that you're on a fresh restart to ensure that everything is working perfectly. Now that we've gone ahead and restarted our PC, what we're going to be doing is going into the FPS pack one more time, getting the timeresolution.exe program and putting that onto our desktop. And once you've done that, you'll find it on your desktop. Now, this program basically speeds up Windows code, ensuring that Windows, your operating system, your hardware, and the game itself can all talk to each other at a much more optimized rate to ensure that if anything needs to be drawn quicker, it can do so. And it can also get access to your resources at a much faster rate to ensure that your frame rates are as high as possible and your input lag is as low as possible. Also help fixing input lag and also reducing stuttering. So this program is absolutely fantastic. And I recommend using it for every game, not just Warframe. So once you guys have got that onto your desktop, what we're gonna be doing is right clicking, running as an administrator and hitting the maximum button found here at the bottom left. Once we're playing, we're going to be minimizing that, ensuring that it is then running. And once we're done playing, you guys can go ahead, close out your game, come in, press default, exit out, and you can leave it closed until you play another game. But because we're about to boot up into the game, we're going to be running as an administrator, hitting maximum and minimizing the program. We're then going to be going into advanced system care, going to speed up, going back to the turbo boost option, and we're going to be turning that on. Inside of that, it's going to tell you how many services and apps have been stopped and how much RAM has been released and freed up on your system. For me, an entire gigabyte has just been freed up on my system, ensuring that that can be used for other things such as the game applications and just giving you a lot more extra headroom and stopping anything unnecessary that doesn't need to be running. Again, what we're going to be doing is minimizing or just exiting out of that as it will run in your system tray. Then once we're done with that, all you have to do is go on Steam, go to Warframe and boot into the game. Once your game is updated and it's ready to play, make sure you hit that play button. And once you guys are inside of the game, inside of the main menu, make sure that you just go ahead, tab out and go to the desktop. And once you're inside of the desktop, what we're going to be doing is going ahead, going into our task manager by right clicking on the bottom, opening task manager. What we're then going to be doing is going onto the evolution engine found inside of here, right clicking, going to go to details, right clicking on warframe.x64 or x32, depending on which one you're running, setting the priority and setting the priority to high, hitting change, and then we can just simply exit out of there. Now, I recommend doing that every time you boot into Warframe to ensure that it is running to the best of its ability and to ensure that it's getting access to all the resources it needs to do. And after applying all of the fixes and everything, just applying the game to high priority mode on the CPU, it also gave me an additional eight FPS, which is absolutely insane. So there you guys have it. That is the ultimate guide to increasing your FPS inside of Warframe. It works on the latest update, which just came out today. Please do like and share with anyone else who might be playing Warframe. Please do like and share with any of your friends because that helps me out a ton. Please also do press that like button on this video if this video has helped you guys. And let me know about your results in the comment section below as it's always fantastic to get a discussion going. Also feel free to leave any comments or any questions down there as well because it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for watching guys. Please do like and subscribe to the channel and all that good stuff. As I do release FPS guides, for all current, upcoming, and newly released games, and I'm always open to suggestions in the comments section below. For everything FPS, content creation, and other PC guides, subscribe to the channel. Well, thank you very much for watching. I have been Panjano, and I am out.